I spoke years ago at a conference, uh, an economic conference, about the world economic system. And this guy came up to me afterwards, and he was someone who um, got his money you know, playing the Las Vegas casino, known as the uh, Wall Street and the commodity markets and all that stuff. And he wasn't very convinced. Anyway, he, I, I met him three months, four months later, and he said, my goodness me, he said, I can see what you're saying. He said, what I've noticed is every time um, Alan Greenspan, then head of the Federal Reserve, was about to make a statement, two or three days before, the major players in the stock markets, commodity markets, etc., got into something and out of other things. And every time, the effect of Greenspan's statement has been to push up what they got into and push down what they got out of. Why? Because they wrote his statement. The whole economic system is about whether people have confidence in it, and the confidence comes from the people who run it. And so what we're going to see, we've started to see this with Greenspan, um, is we're going to see more and more negative statements about the economy, and we're going to see a breaking of confidence in it, and therefore we're going to see its demise, its collapse. Now this won't collapse um, catastrophically for the elite, because people say to me, well, why would these elite people, why would they um, crash the stock market um, when they had lots of money in it? Well, if you know a stock market is going to crash or a commodity is going to crash because you're the one who's going to crash it, then what do you do? You get out of it just before the crash, you let it crash, and then you buy up vastly greater amounts of that at a few cents on the dollar, and then you increase the confidence and up it goes again, and now you, are, you own vast amounts more than you did before. There was the famous uh, story, infamous story, of the Rothschilds at the time of the Battle of Waterloo, when uh, the Rothschilds um, uh, put out the false rumor in the uh, London uh, financial district that uh, Britain had lost the Battle of Waterloo. And, of course, everything crashed. And then came a, a, along the real uh, news, the real truth, which is they'd won the Battle of Waterloo and the stock market went flying up again, except when it crashed, the Rothschilds had agents all around buying up stocks on a few cents on the dollar. And at the end of that day, the Rothschilds were vastly more wealthy and powerful than they were before. So if a stock market crashes or an economic system crashes, it's because those who move trillions of dollars around it every day have made it crash. And in a world where money is king, where money um, decides choice, where money decides life possibility, what greater way of creating chaos and fear than a collapse of the economy? And we're already seeing that happen. It works like this. This is how the economy, this is how the economic system has worked for centuries and still being applied today. It's real simple, and this is how the elite few have trawled the wealth of the world and created booms and uh, busts at will. Stage one, they push interest rates down, start recognizing the, the, the cycle that's just coming to an end, um, and they put lots of money into circulation, what we call money, because it's not governments that put money into circulation. It's private banks controlled by the same pyramid um, making loans to people, credit loans. That's how money is put into circulation, not by governments. So what the banking cartel does is it puts vast amounts of money into circulation by pushing interest rates down and giving loans for, you know, on next to no collateral. What happens then is there's lots of economic activity because there's lots of money swirling around, so there's lots of, of, um, of uh, units of exchange to buy goods. 
So what happens is people get more confident, they take out more debt themselves, because, oh, we can have a bigger house now, darling. Yours, the economy's doing so well, we'll have a bigger car, we'll have two uh, holidays, vacations a year now, or three maybe, because we're doing ever so well. And what do businesses do? They get into more debt, because, crikey, we've got all this demand, we've got to invest in plant and machinery and more staff and all this, so we can meet demand. And then, that is in effect, the elite, economically, putting the fishing line out. And then at some point, and we're, we're closing in on that point now, they start reeling the fishing line in. Because what they do is they start pushing interest rates up. Now what happens is lots of money that was circulating here, buying things and creating economic activity, is now going out of the economy to pay increased interest rates on the debts that people have. As a result of that, um, there's fewer things being bought and sold. Uh, companies don't, don't need as many uh, people working for them. They've now, they're now stuck with all this debt and all this plant and machinery that they, had, that they don't need anymore. People can no longer pay their mortgages, so now there's, there's a problem uh, with the mortgage companies, and they have a problem um, uh, because they've got to lose their home. And as more and more people do that, the, the uh, value of homes goes down until eventually it's a point where they're worth less than you actually paid for them. And what we're seeing then is a, a bust being manipulated. And it's happening for one reason and one reason only. The amount of units of exchange in circulation is being removed from the economy. What we're seeing now are, are, are the, 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 the signs that they're now manipulating a bust in this very way to create as much chaos and panic and fear as possible. Because panic, fear and, uh, and uh, chaos are a manipulator's dream.